Hello, my name's Adrian Richards. I'm a plastic and cosmetic surgeon and the surgical director of Aurora Clinics, which is based in the United Kingdom. I just thought today I'd give you a bit of an update on our experiences of Macrolane and where we are with Macrolane treatment um, as of today, which is the 10th of March 2010. So, essentially Macrolane is a, uh, one of the a family of hyaluronic acids made by a company called QMed. Um, uh, which have been used for a long time. So the main hyaluronic acid is called Restylane. It's got uh, sort of different variations of hyaluronic acid which are essentially used in the face. So Restylane has been used in a lot of patients, very successful, but the average sort of volume used in the face is between one and five mils. That's one and five millilitres, so not a great volume. Macrolane, on the other hand, is bigger particles. It's a very similar hyaluronic acid, but the particle size is bigger, and it's designed really for the breast and soft tissue augmentation in the lower body. But the interesting thing is that the volumes we're talking about using are much higher in Macrolane rather than Restylane. So typical volumes of Macrolane would be over 100 mils, whereas Restylane is under 5 mils. Now, so we've done a number of treatments. It's attractive, the idea of macrolane treatment is attractive, minimal scarring, minimal downtime, and a, a, a natural result. However, we have found problems with it. Um, and the problems have mainly been that the procedure is uncomfortable, the patients don't really like it, and there certainly is quite a lot of downtime after the procedure. So people often feel very sore after the operation, and some people can feel a little bit unwell uh, following the uh, procedure. Um, and it really, the downtime is very similar to a breast enlargement procedure. So on both of them there's a very similar amount of downtime. Um, the uh, other main factor, the other downside of macrolane which we found is the rate of capsulisation. So a capsule is when the body naturally walls off the macrolane, so it, the body will wall off any foreign material. And we found that approximately in 50% of the patients we've treated with macrolane, there has been some firmness, some lumpiness in the breast, which in some cases can be painful. So overall, we found 50%, roughly 50% of patients very happy with macrolane, 50% of patients not so happy, mainly because of the firmness, and maybe because it was more uncomfortable than they initially thought. Um, so. When we compare that to breast, traditional breast augmentation, which has got a good safety record, more permanent solution, the only downside is the scar is a bit longer, you know, four and a half to five centimetres in the fold, but that's very well concealed. There aren't significant uh, advantages to macrolane, in my opinion, over breast enlargement. So for that reason, we've stopped offering uh, macrolane um, and are advising our patients to have a breast augmentation uh, procedure and this remember, breast augmentation has come on a long way. I've talked about it in other videos. You know, there's lots of different sizes, shapes of implants, the actually anaesthetic and techniques improve, so there's much less downtime. So, in summary, macrolane is a possibility, but there are risks associated with it. You need to bear those in mind. And, in my opinion, uh, a breast enlargement procedure with a wall silicone implant, which has been used for many, many years is a better option. So I hope that's proved helpful. If you'd like any information about any of the topics I've discussed, please either contact us by ringing us on 01844 214362 or by contacting us via our website um, and the email is info at aurora-clinics.co.uk. Thanks for watching.